Hello everybody and I, know, and I want to wish you all a happy new year and I also want to welcome you all to another episode of RG22 Outdoor Adventures and um, I think this is our fourth video of lure making so what I'm showing you here is we're going to do I'm going to build another um, grandma style crankbait it's going to be a lot smaller probably maybe four to five inches long and obviously it's going to be through wire. You can see that I'm drawing the shape, drawing where, the, where I want to place the lip. And also um, where I'm going to place the hook hangers based on the route of the through wire. Also getting the thickness of the diving lip that we're going to use, which is going to be Lexan. Approximate eye placement that I have drawn and where most likely I'm going to put the gills. So there's the lure, two pieces of basswood epoxy together, and now we're getting ready to take the lure um, over to the bandsaw. And obviously you've seen three other videos where we cut the wood and we have the shape all drawn out with the diving lip. We're going to cut around the lines and then cut the diving lip out. And that's basically it for the lure. So we've got the top cut out. Now we're working on the bottom half of the lure. And eventually after that, we will be working on the diving lip, which um, you'll see some of the cuts being made. So there's a the lure finished right there. Now, make sure that your table is perfectly level. And there you can see I've got the cuts. They look pretty parallel. And now we're just gonna cut the remainder of that wood out from the middle. So there's the, actually there you can see the lip right there, the slot that the lip's going to go into. Now the other part is doing the, uh, the sanding, getting it all shaped before we do our, before we mark our chamfer lines and before we do any carving. So here we are using the, um, the disc sander, just sanding it all down, getting the round, getting the front and the back rounded out and then we're going to flatten the bottom out and then get it all nice on the big belt sander. So we should be doing that shortly. There we are. Okay so we are sanding the sides down now trying to get those all nice and flat, um, nice and level. I've got it on the drill press. It's all clamped up. And like I've said in a few of my other videos, um, when I'm doing my eyes, I prefer to drill a hole straight through it. And that way I, I know the exact spot where the eyes are going to be. There's no, they're not offset one way or the other. They're perfectly level with each other in the same place. And this gives a lure a finished look when it's all done. And we're starting to actually see the body of the lure, the shape, everything's starting to take shape. Um, here I'm marking the center with a marker. Just to kind of give myself an idea of how far right, um, how thick I want to make the body of the lure and where I want to make my chamfer lines. Now on my, previous, on my previous videos that you've seen with the lures that I've made, I really haven't made any diagonal cuts that you can see here, the lines that I'm drawing. Typically what I've done on the other three lures that I've done on these videos is I've just basically just cut it straight across, straight down, and then chamfered the, um, the body from there without doing any of these, these angled cuts. But on this lure I decided to do that. And basically... You can measure my, you can use straight edges. I think this lure was small enough to where I just basically eyeballed it and did it all freehand. All right, so I've got the body, I've got the angles all cut out on the bandsaw. Uh, I think I probably did that off camera. And then what I did was I drew some chamfer lines on the side, and then I'm going up, uh, down and across, down, up and down on the on the bottom and the top of the lure. Trying to make probably the bottom a little bit thicker than the top, uh, just so I can place lead holes and everything. And from here, we actually start carving the lure, and I've done that on 
through other videos, the process is the same. Um, so make sure you stay in the lines, use a sharp knife, and start carving. And don't forget, and don't forget as you're carving, also check in every once in a while, every few passes, check and make sure that your lines are nice and straight, that everything looks symmetrical, because you can always fix it. Um, it's just when you're at the actual finished part of it, it's really tough to do at the end. So just make sure you're checking it at, at, um, at small intervals as you go, making sure everything's looking uh, symmetrical and the same on both sides. Uh, Okay, so here we have the whole lure uh, carved out. The chamfer lines were all carved and checked it on all the sides and looked pretty symmetrical. Um, at this point right now, I'm starting to work on the diving lip. Uh, this is Lexan that I'm using. You can get this at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. Any hardware store will have it. Um, I have a circle tool that I use to make circles. And I drew a few circles trying to measure it out to see what looks right. And after I found the, the shape that I wanted, then I'm drawing my center line that I'm going to use to get everything lined up with the diving lip. Took it to the bandsaw, cut the shape out, and here I am sanding the, um, trying to do all the finishing sanding, making the edges look good, getting them nice and smooth, going from a fairly coarse grit sandpaper all the way down to a super fine grit, and finally go into a leather strop where you can get a really nice smooth shiny edge on it where you can basically see right through the edge. Uh, if you're into that stuff, great, use it if you're not and that's your lowest grit sandpaper that you haven't called done. Okay, so at this point I've done a consider a considerable amount of sanding. Uh, I had the had the lure in the vise, did a lot of sanding there trying to get it all the edges all rounded out. Uh, took it out of the vise, did a lot of hand sanding, got it really nice and smooth, figured out where I wanted the lead hole to go, uh, drilled the lead hole out. Um, that same hole is where the through the hook hanger for the through wire is going to go through as well. So in this in this part right here, what I'm doing is I'm drawing out a line of how I, where I want the the wire to go and basically how deep I want it to lay in the lure. Um, as you know, you've seen this in other videos. I've already mentioned it a few times that uh, this top air, going through the top for me is a pretty easy way to do it. Um, you really can't screw it up. Um, and I, I picked this up from another YouTube, uh, another YouTube lure making channel called The Engineered Angler. So I'll just keep referencing it until you guys tell me not to. Anyways, um, so basically all I'm doing is test fitting, bending the wires, and seeing how how everything is going to fit and so we're just working towards a final fitting and placement of the wire So as you can see, 
the wire, the through wire is all fitted in, uh, bent, everything's done. And now I'm just mocking up the diving lip to see how everything fits together and see how it looks. And as I've said before, this is where you really start seeing the lure coming to life. Um, you see where the line ties are going to be. You see where the hooks are going to be hanging. You have an idea of where the weight's going to be, the diving lip. And, and you just kind of get this vision of the lure moving through the water and how it's going to dive and just how it's just going to react. And for me... At this point, this is probably, other than getting it finished and seeing the finished product, this is probably the single most exciting part. Here, I took the lure to the belt sander. I really wasn't satisfied. I thought there was too, it was too fat. And I just started sanding it, and I got it all sealed up after I did some more uh, hand sanding. So, as you see, I've got some pretty thick, I've got some glitter. Um, I picked this technique up from watching... Uh, a channel that I subscribe to called uh, Lookers Lures. So make sure you make sure you watch that channel. Uh, dude does some freaking awesome work. Great paint jobs, everything. And um, so I got this idea for doing the glitter. Uh, I tried super glue on this one, and I mean it worked. So it did it did what it's supposed to do. So here I am just loading the lure up with super glue, and then I'm just gonna dump a bunch of glitter on it. So hence the glitter bomb. That's kind of funny, yeah. Anyways, I got a chuckle out of that. So there we are, a ton of glitter. The lure is just covered in it. And from there, we take and we will put a finish over. And I think I just kept putting more and more on to cover it up. So, yeah, as you can see as the video is going, I, I just started just going crazy with it and adding more and more. Yep, so at this point, I've just loaded the lure up with a bunch of glitter, and I put a coat of epoxy on, and I think I, and I actually um, let it sit for a couple hours, and I came back, and I put another coat of epoxy on the lure. It got really smooth, let it sit for about 24 hours, came back, sanded it down, got it really smooth for, um, for this, so I can start painting it. So we are moving closer and closer to the end of the uh, lure. We just started painting it. And what, I, what I'm what i using, the very first color that I'm using is some fluorescent pink. And I'm doing a really nice light coat over it first, let it dry obviously. And then just building it up as I go with thinner and thinner coats across the top. And then just kind of letting the overspray hit the sides as I move further down the lure. But I don't take the paint all the way down. I just kind of stop right before the lateral line, where the lateral line would be. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just letting the overspray come down to the bottom of the lure. And here you can see that I'm I'm painting the, the brushes at a fairly far distance from the lure. And I'm just getting just the spray to it. After that, um, we start moving on to our next color. That next color is going to be a fluorescent purple and again I'm gonna do very nice light coats because I want that glitter to show through however we're I want to build it up nice and thin and then again letting that spray come down the side of the lure um, but not letting it go as far down as I did with the pink so it's only gonna go maybe halfway down maybe just a ladder line or just a little below it and again it's just a spritz or a spray of it not not covering it at this point, when we're at, when we're done with the purple, we get a nice, it looks kind of purplish, pinkish color. And it's really bright, and it really shines nicely through the glitter. So as you can see, as I'm moving the lure from side to side, you can kind of see where the purple ends, and that pink goes all the way down to the bottom of the lure. The purple goes maybe, maybe halfway down. And it's just, it looks really nice. It has a nice, really nice shading. So this is the final color on the lure. This is a 
pearl, wicked pearl blue from uh, Createx. And this is another one that I'm just going to do super light to begin with, going across the top, and then just ever so lightly letting it go down the side of the lure with the overspray. So this makes it look really, instead of it being blue because I'm doing it so light, it's more of a purple, and it's a darker purple. So you have this really nice shading of uh, this purple, a light, a dark, dark pink down into a really nice fluorescent pink. And then from there underneath the body, it's going to be a pearl white. And as it shows through the glitter, it kind of looks a little spacier or, or cosmic-y kind of, kind of color, kind of paint scheme. So... All right, so normally what I like to do is I like to put another coat of clear over the paint job. So that way if there's any mistakes, I don't, I'm not screwing anything up. This one, I decided to not do that. So I've got the purple mesh over it. I've got it all clipped on, as you can see. And now I'm going to start painting the scales. Typically on all my other lures, I did, a, I did a white pearl. But this time, I wanted to do something different. So I am using... A blue purple color shift paint that I'm going to use for the scales and based on how the lure turns into water I want to give it a really cool um, effect so as you can see the scales are done and now I'm going to paint the belly of the lure with the pearl white so here I am painting a pearl white Again, I'm staying, trying to stay far away from the lure, so that way, just the just the the mist of the paint hits hits the lure, and I might get a little bit of overspray up along the sides on the bottom. So the underbelly is painted with the pearl white and I'm going to move on to the to the head and what I'm doing is I'm taking the stencil for the gills that I'm using and I'm painting that front part of the head uh, in opaque white to cover up all the colors. Um, and we're going to do the we're going to do obviously both sides. From there as you can see the gills are being painted I'm doing the other side right now. Trying to figure out how I'm going to lay the stencil down, get it all taped down. I need Sometimes you need more than just uh, two hands to do it. So we'll paint it, get it all covered up. If anybody out there has got an easier way for me to do this, then please let me know in the comments. Figured I didn't have enough uh, gill space. Needed a little bit more, so I'm adding more paint. And basically I kind of do this in case I screw the head up, then I can keep just painting opaque white and just keep painting over it until I get it right. So here I got the basic shape what I'm going to use for the gill. Grabbing uh, the stencils again. We're going to start on the inside. And I was going to paint that all red. And that red's going to be the accent to make it look like there's some bleeding coming from the gills. And like I said, sometimes you need an extra hand, so the so the tape really works really nice when you need that uh, that little extra help holding everything down to get really good lines. So the right side of the lure, the accent colors are done, and now I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. So here I am doing the other side, same same thing with the stencils. 
uh, starting with the inside and then working on the outside. And like I said, these are just going to be accents. So when I paint when I paint the black over it, this should look like uh, some bleeding, some blood coming from the gills. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking stencils and I'm just randomly painting spots on the front, on the head. It goes down the head, down the gills, on both sides, just randomly painting spots. Right now I'm using the fluorescent pink. And like I said, I'm using each color that I had on the, um, on the body of the lure. So after the other side is done, I continue on with uh, with just moving on with the colors. So going with the fluorescent purple, ran do it the same exact thing, just randomly putting the colors on there to kind of give a different effect. Um, and then from there, we just continue and we end it off with blue with the um, with the wicked uh, pearl blue. And after all that is done, then I go ahead and I'm going to take the um, the blue purple color shift paint that you see on the scale on the scales in this picture. Um, I'm going to put that over the head and then put it across the back. And I think after that, um, and then we're done with we're done at that point. But we're not done with the head yet. We got we have to do some finishing stuff on the gills. So again, stencils, random, just random spots where I'm, what I'm, where I'm putting all the color, and we're on our last color for the gills, and that's the, um, the wicked pearl blue from Createx. And the stencils, the stencils you can get on Amazon as well. I, I don't remember. I'd have to remember looking where I got them from. I don't really remember where. I should make note of it and next time. Put it down in the in the um, description. Of each of these videos. Okay, so here's what the lure looks like. Um, you've, I've got my color shifting painted scales, the red accent for the gills, and then I've got my randomly placed uh, airbrush colors of the fluorescent pink, fluorescent purple, and fluorescent blue. And then it looks like off camera I went ahead and uh, painted the the gills black. Now this is a part of the lure that I've never done before. Um, you've typically seen me in my past videos just spray paint some white with the with these fin stencils and then I've taken a pencil I've drawn lines and I've painted over that to try to make some sort of effect for a fin. I've never taken stencils and airbrushed a fin so this is the very first time I've done this. And I thought actually it came out pretty good. So I got all this, I got the stencils taped down. Um, and then I've got another, I thought I'd use, and I got another stencil that I'm just using for a line. And I'm just going to very lightly, and I've got the airbrush, I've got the paint um, thinned out pretty well too. So it flows out nicely. And all I'm doing is just painting a line across and uh, just letting some of that overspray hit the paint. Uh, Hit the stencil and in all honesty it was probably one of the uh, most challenging parts of doing this entire lure on top of painting the gills of course so there's the fin right there's the fin in all its glory um, it, it was an extremely challenging thing to do, and I'm really happy with how the fin came out. So now I'm flipping the lure over, flipping the stencil around, and doing the same exact procedure on the other side. Okay, well at this point I'm about done with the lure. The gills are painted, the fins are done, 
transparent black, took a stencil, put some wicked detail yellow over it a little bit. Um, the ha glass half round dome um, eyes I used from Amazon with some black paint, wicked detail yellow for the iris. Um, steel tape punched in with a 3 8 inch set into the eye sockets. Glitter with some epoxy, set the eyes, let it dry. I put a nice coat of epoxy with some glitter over the lure, let it sit on the rotisserie for about 24 hours. Got the diving lip, put the real diving lip in. And what you're going to see next is the unveiling of what I like to call the Cosmic Glitter Bomb through wire crankbait. And there it is finished. So the colors are just amazing. The glitter really sets the lure off. You can see the glitter underneath the paint. Um, the fins, I think, came out really nice. Considering this is the first time I've ever done that. The gills look pretty good. Um, all in all, I think it was a pretty darn good lure. And here is the lures in action. Okay, well, um, I've got both lures today. I've got the, um, the shad lure, which I wasn't able to show in action because everything was locked up in ice. And um, I've got the Cosmic Glitter Bomb shad bait or um, crankbait. And you can see I'm working the Shadler. Casts really nice. Has a beautiful action to it. You can see the action in the rod tip. It's just, the kick on it is just amazing. Um, floats. When it dives, it has a really extremely slow rise. Tracks true through the water. Doesn't blow out when it's pulled really quick. So I think this will be a nice lure that we control for musky and another one that will be uh, nice casting and it will have that really, really nice pause that hopefully will elicit a strike. I also want to thank all of you guys for watching subs and subscribing and liking these videos. Um, without any of you guys and your support, none of this would be possible. So just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart continuously for watching these videos and supporting everything. Um, let's see. Okay. And I'm basically just, uh, playing around with the lure right now, just casting it, seeing how it works and just really getting a good feel for the lure when I begin to use it, uh, come springtime. And coming up is the, uh, unveiling of the casting of the cosmic, uh, glitter bomb crankbait. And I had a subscriber that said he loved using purple lures and he had great luck with them. And uh, for you, here's your lure right here. You can see it's got purple, it's real cosmic-y, spacey, col spacey colored, and has a real nice spacey feel. And so let's see how it casts, let's see how it reels in. Um, I think you guys will be really happy with it. I was when I was using it. Uh, I thought it had a really cool action to it you can just see the action in the rod tip and um it was another lure that didn't uh blow out it stayed true it didn't it stayed true in the water the action was great um it didn't move to one side or the other it just stayed straight and true so i think if this one was ever out of tune it would be easily tunable as you can see it it casts out nicely a nice far cast accurate and it feels like it's really digging digging in at this point. And you can just see the, the kick on the rod tip. It's just amazing. The action that this lure has. I think it's going to work out really awesome uh, come this spring for bass and things like that. Maybe even over the summer. Unfortunately, the lure sinks. And it sinks like a rock. So you really got to reel it in. I tried it in some shallow water downstream of this point, And... It dives in such a way that that lip just digs right into the water. The hooks stay up above the bottom, and I didn't get it snagged up once. So I think this is another lure that would be really good for saw guy below spillways as well. There's some more casts, some more action. Trying to see if I can see the lure in the water with the camera so you guys can see the action of it. But again, um, I want to thank all of you guys for watching. And please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share these videos with your, uh, with your friends and fellow fishermen. So on that note, I hope you all have a great day and a great new year. And thanks again for watching. Bye.